morning. This is now my second attempt at my personal preview of the France-Belgium semi-final. I made one yesterday in the evening, but it was just not coherent. I was very tired and I got lost in thought too many times, which is the first video that I will not post. I am usually very willing to post whatever comes out of me, but I already felt yesterday in the morning uh, if you watch that video, I think uh, what I'm saying there is okay, but it's still not uh, to what I um, aspire to, to, so to say. So yeah, uh, I decided to redo it. Um, I will also have the preview, the uh, stats preview for England versus Croatia, or better Croatia versus England. We are in Croatia today. Um, ready and should be up at the time that you watch this. So I hope you can enjoy this. Um, well, today I'm a little, I'm for the first time actually really, really, really prepared. Uh, meaning I made, I wrote myself some, at least some mental notes. Usually I have enough to say that uh, comes out right that. But yesterday I really felt I was pulling, I was trying to make the video much longer and I knew I wanted to say more, but I just didn't come. So here we go. My thoughts about France against Belgium, and this is now very personal. This does not um, just how I feel. This is not uh, borne out by numbers a lot, but by my observations and how I feel the teams will be performing uh, tonight. First thing I gotta say is, uh, it's probably the least important, one might say, that Belgium is the last Adidas team left. Adidas is the official World Cup sponsor. Uh, we have the match ball from Adidas. You see all the Adidas commercials on the back. And now we have three Nike teams and one Adidas team, which uh, is in a way remarkable because since Nike really made its entry into uh, international football, and that was for the 98 World Cup. I think it was the first time we saw the big tournament Nike jersey. It might be the 97 Copa America. I think, yes, that, that, that will be the first tournament with, with Brazil. But I know that in 96 there were no Nike shirts yet at Euro 96. So I went through that. But since then, Nike has only won two tournaments. That was Brazil in 2002 and that was Portugal uh, in 2016. Uh, I know that Adidas held always the, str um, the stronger teams, but it's still a remarkable uh, fact, especially since Nike went for big teams. I mean, they off the bat signed Brazil, they signed the Netherlands, and they signed Italy, which at the time one might well consider the three strongest national teams uh, out there. Uh, Germany in the mid 90s was faltering. And yeah, uh, I think they were really only missing France at that point. That, that was the big uh, team. And France hosted the World Cup and won the World Cup. And now they have France on, on their roster. So, and we also know that Adidas is now really targeting uh, only the cream of the crop, especially in club soccer. And in international soccer, they are going for national uh, teams also that are a little bit more, uh, yeah, you know, have a higher standing, let's put it that way. Although at this World Cup they still were stuck with some old contracts. But they sure will keep Germany, do their best to keep Germany, they will go for Spain. Uh, so yeah, I don't think they will add a lot. Having said that, I think Adidas will be all in for uh, Belgium. And I don't know if this will play a role. Uh, the last World Cup final, we had two Nike versus Adidas semi-finals and it all went uh, Adidas way. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, also speaking of the Belgium jersey, yesterday I was at our big mall uh, where they are selling of course World Cup jerseys and they had a big selection at the beginning of the World Cup. Uh, strange enough they didn't have the France home jersey, uh, only in kit sizes which is the one that I would have bought right there, but I got it online and for a much better price. Uh, and now, besides uh, obviously some teams that no one wants to buy now, like Spain, the only big, uh, the only jerseys that are left are the Belgium jerseys. Let that sink in. 
semi-final. I didn't check the price tag, I might do it uh, if I get the chance. Because if the price tag is a low one, I actually might get a Belgium jersey. Uh, if they sell it for 85 euros, no way. But I think 70 and below, I can see myself well buying a Belgium jersey. Uh, I know I said it's wrong, but if the price is right, you can get anything. Uh, then I think it would be worth it. Uh, I'm also very proud. I have my England jersey. Uh, st it's still being delivered. But I managed to buy it an England jersey, semi-final team, the current one, uh, at almost 40% off. So uh, I sometimes don't get how things work here. I guess they all just want to get rid of, rid of the stock. Sometimes you have to wait it out. As simple as that. And you know, I'm sure that next year we'll see a lot of half questions. Back to France, Belgium. So. Uh, all, everything I said so far is more jersey related and I don't think has much uh, to play uh, to play in with the actual game unless there is some conspiracy on Adidas' side, which uh, to be frank, I doubt. Uh, they're also sponsoring Euro 2016 and we had a Nike versus Nike final and it would not be very sporting. Uh, it also begs the question, uh, yeah, why we have an official tour t tournament ball, but I always felt it's kind of odd that there's one brand sponsoring the entire tournament, which puts others a little bit at odds. Belgium France, um, it is it's gonna be a tight one, at least ahead of the ahead of the game. Uh, it might play out that you know those tight games. I, I frequently observe this in club soccer when you think that two teams are tight. Um, if there's one goal scored, it, then it can go very awkward in one way. Uh, you can get a high result of two teams that uh, just matched up, uh, that you think are a tight matchup, and then um, one team scores early, which could happen, and that throws the tactics off, and then it can get very lopsided. But I, at this moment, I don't see much separating these teams. Um, the first fact that uh, three factors that I'm looking at. The first one is strengths. I think that Belgium's strength is in offense, France's strength is in defense. I don't like the Belgian defense. Uh, they had a master plan against Brazil where they really they played on their edge and they managed to exploit the Brazilian weaknesses and kind of hide their own weakness. That is, a, uh, that is something that is of note to achieve. But you could see in the first few, in the first half especially, that the Belgian defense, when the game was still a little bit more open, is shaky. And I like the French defense more. And yes, they have a... Uh, I probably would rate Thibaut Courtois a little bit higher than uh, Hugo Lory, but not by much. So, yeah. I still will take the French defense over the Belgian one. In defensive midfield, I like both defensive midfields, but maybe France is a little bit better with N'Golo Kanté and Pogba. Um, it's kind of amazing to me. For me, Pogba, he was always in Italy, this outstanding offensive dynamic player, and now he, he's a, a solid defensive midfielder. I have not seen Pogba for France do what he did for Juventus, and probably he never has done for Manchester United either. So yeah. But that defensive midfield, I think, is a really, really, really strong one. Fellaini and Witzel, um, not as strong, but I still like their uh, dynamic uh, playing ways. And then up front, yes, I would give Belgium uh, the edge because they're a little bit uh, more gelling together. They play with each other for a long time, whereas Mbappé is, uh, is probably the best talent on either of the squads. But Mbappé is kind of a new addition. I always have to feel that Griezmann is not playing uh, what he should be playing yet. And maybe he's just tired from a very long season with Atletico Madrid and all the um, transfer spectacle around surrounding him. So he's not up there yet. And if between Giroud and Lukaku, I choose Lukaku, especially at this uh, World Cup. Lukaku has been outstanding. I know he is often the butt of jokes, but I really think that he proved everyone that he can, he's an outstanding player. His physical presence and his technical ability uh, are a force to watch. De Bruyne, 
had kind of a so and so tournament and I think if Mertens was really fit then I think uh, it would be much more in favor of Belgium than I see it at the moment but yeah um, offensively I see an advantage for Belgium and this is basically the key matchup uh, the French holding back a little bit more and Belgium trying to hit them on a the counter attack and yeah I think this is not playing into Belgium's strength if I think about it, at least from the outset. Um, if France can play from a solid midfield and use, uh, keep the game slow so that Belgium never get, gets into uh, fluid ridden and then can use uh, quick counter strikes against Mbappé and dead Belgian defense, uh, it can go very quickly one way. On the other side, and now we're at the second point, I think that tactically, Belgium has an advantage and Martinez made a change he put a back three against Brazil uh, to kind of exploit Brazil's weaknesses and not be caught too much off guard if he can do devise a similar tactical plan against uh, France I'm not sure if Deschamps can react if the game goes the wrong way and I always hear especially from some of my colleagues that tactics are overrated I think tactics are extremely important you can get, yes, if you have great players, you probably will win a few games, but uh, crucial games, uh, you usually win on a tactical front. You have to devise the right plan. I'm not a tactical expert, but I, I read enough that it makes total sense to me that with the right tactics and just a uh, few position shifts and being flexible in uh, your game, is a huge huge advantage one that uh, many teams fail to exploit and I think we will see this could be maybe an undoing of Croatia tomorrow uh, but I'll talk about Croatia England tomorrow yeah so I think on a technical uh, point of view I think Martinez is the better coach I don't make much of the point that everyone is saying that yeah uh, the Belgians have Henri and he knows so much about the French squad give me a break uh, Henri is out of the game it seems like to me for at least six years maybe eight years maybe eight, even eight years uh, he has not to my knowledge played with anyone from that French squad he has not trained with anyone of that French squad the only thing that connects him to this French squad is his nationality he's French um, I do believe that having a world-class player, former world-class player like Henri in your squad, especially with your offense, uh, can help a lot, especially since he is uh, an awe he was an awe-inspiring player and I, I think he garners a lot of respect for that. So from that point of view, I can see that Henri is helping. I don't think Henri is a big, uh, you know, this X factor that he will now know everything about the French. I trust Martinez to get all the calls that he needs to get, uh, have a nice tactical plan and I think tactically Belgium will be superior. I think player material wise France will be superior and that makes already for an interesting matchup. Um, and France has a base plan and the one thing both teams are teams. I actually really liked what of all of I saw from France and this is the one thing that I give to Deschamps. He is he really is a father figure to, to these players and he's himself a born leader. He was the captain of the great France side of the late 1990s early 2000s uh, and that says a lot. This was a team full with personalities and he was their captain. He was the leader of that team and I see also that he's the leader of this team. He has control over the squad and the squad in, in itself. Um, Pogba is an explosive player, uh, especially with personality. You, you can see he, he can, you, if, if you can right, you can get, get him off. But the, his teammates know that and try to calm him down. And this is something that uh, only a true team can do. And also the coach tells his players, you know, this was not right world, but be careful here. Uh, but he and, and so he's uh, not short on critique, but he's also not short on praise. And you could see this right after the Uruguay game. And I think this is something um, that really, really makes him positive about this French squad.
Uh, of course, the Belgian squad, they're on a roll now. I mean, they came back from uh, Japan, being two goals down, and they, came, and they really, really surprised against Brazil. But they put a lot of effort in there. And this is the, the one factor that I think will go for France's way. Uh, when it comes to rest, not only does Belgium have a player that will miss a game, uh, the outside defender, Meunier, but for us had the much easier path. They, uh, the game against Argentina, they had for one half, they didn't exert themselves too much. They got the early goal with Mbappe being out of his mind, uh, running through the Argentinian defense. Maybe they took it a little bit too easy. Uh, going then and that's why Ar Ar Argentina could turn the game on its head but honestly it was a little bit of a surprise that Argentina could take the lead because I always felt that France was in control then they played I think for 20 if not 30, 30 minutes France played full out and that was the first time that, that, that they saw that and it was awe inspiring yes it was against an Argentina team that was very open on the back but that's exactly where this Belgium team is a little bit shaky um, so yeah, uh, I don't like the Belgian defense and I do like the way that France is a little bit more rested. I really thought that this game against Uruguay that they had, they really didn't exert themselves too much. This was just they got from a standard situation, they got the first goal without playing much. I mean, yeah, Uruguay challenged them, tackled them. France took control of the game without being really full out. They kill it off with the goal, thanks to a goalkeeping error by Griezmann, and that was that. Then everyone knew at that point. I mean, you could see this, the Uruguayan defender, when he had to make the wall, and there was this free kick, how he was crying, because he knew there is nothing they can do anymore. This game is lost. Uh, it was that clear. So I think just physically, presence and uh, strength you know being rested is playing strongly into France's hands uh, Belgium I think this game against Brazil cost them a lot yes it's an emotional high and it might not be a factor now it might be a factor in the final so I'm actually looking at you England if Belgium really beats France today I actually think that you will be able to exploit that because you also had this restedness and speaking of restedness this is one factor that is for all four semi-finalists. Not only are they, are they from Europe, they are four teams that were already qualified before the final round of group play. Just let that sink in. All of them could rest players at one part in, in, uh, in the tournament, third game. They could take advantage of that, they didn't have to play full out. All, all, all the way through. All had already the passage to the next round secured. That I think is huge. I really think this is huge and this could uh, be a decisive, this is the decisive effect of why those four teams moved on. The other ones were Uruguay and Russia and see where they went. Quarterfinals. Yep. So being rested I always thought it doesn't play dividends because I saw it at the Euros that frequently teams that uh, rest their players in the last group game because they already qualified qual qual that they don't go further. Uh, maybe for a six game tournament like the Euros that's not the case but now it's already a seven game tournament. But at this World Cup if you could rest players that got you somewhere. Being rested in this tournament is a long tournament and teams that want to go far you need to also do it be economically with how you exert yourself and I think this is where France is probably the most superior side uh, again my personal personally I'm more for France than for Belgium I make no bones about that uh, I really respect what Belgium is doing I'm actually quite happy to see that Belgium finally 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 is uh, showing the promise that they have always been giving us for the last two tournaments. I actually think they did well in 2014. They were just a big disappointment in 2016. I think uh, Belgium should have made it quality-wise to the semis at least. Probably they, were, they would have been quality-wise better than Portugal. But yes, they didn't have a coach and now they have a coach. And that's why I think Belgium is very dangerous. Um, 
who should I give the nod? It's a toss-up. It's really a toss-up to me. And it all comes down to um, tactics. I really think if Martinez has a master plan and hits the French on the right day, Belgium will win. However, if I take all the other factors into, into account, if it's a game that is kind of a little bit slow, where France can sit back and use the Mbappé's strength going forward, Belgium might be in for a long day. Uh, if Belgium can keep their momentum going from the Brazil game, uh, yeah, it might go their way. Um, but personally, yes, I favor France. I'm a little bit afraid of the tackling, I don't want to call him tackling genius, but of the tackling superiority, superiority of Martinez. But I see a little bit more going for France, to be honest. So maybe I would give the slight edge to France, but I don't discount Belgium. It's gonna be an interesting one. I hope it will be an enjoyable game. Um, I'm not sure about that. If France can kill the game, or, uh, France will probably try to kill the game off and take all the wind out of the sails of Belgium. But it will, it will be interesting to see. I think it will be an interesting game. It, uh, it might be uh, getting all its, um, you know, momentum from it being uh, still a tight game. Uh, what we have to hope is that there will be an early goal. Then I think it will be a good game. Well. So this is my official personal preview of Belgium France. Maybe I'll have a Belgium shirt by the evening. Maybe not. I I don't know how re how reasonable it is since Belgium is a team that I respect, but it's not a team that I necessarily cheer for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.